Hi there, my name is Matt Johnson. I'm with the Spartanburg County Public Library, and I'm here today to talk about guitars. And I know with Christmas season coming up, a lot of us may be getting ourselves, friends, or our children an electric guitar as a gift. Also, during the pandemic, a lot of us have looked for ways to pass the time, uh, focus on a skill. A lot of people decided, you know what, I thought I wanted to make my guitar. Well, what I'm going to do here today is to give you some brief instructions on how to properly maintain your guitar. These are going to include how to restring a guitar, how to properly tune a guitar, and then we're going to look at how to set up the guitar so it plays well. That way you don't have fret buzz or the action's too high or the intonation's off. I'm going to demonstrate these to you. I'm also going to give you some hints on tools you can easily buy. You can buy them from local guitar stores, through online merchants, Amazon, Stuart McDonald. Uh, this is all just a very, very basic guide for you so you can get your guitar playing as best as you can so it's really pretty and more enjoyable experience while you learn how to play. Okay, everybody. What we want to start doing first today is I want to show you how to uh, take your old strings off, how to install new strings, and, and tune them up with a post tuner and get them in tune. But I want to take a moment first to look through some of the tools I'm going to be using today. You may not necessarily need all of these, but I found that for everything that I'm wanting to do, these are some of my must-have items. You're obviously going to need a tuner. Now, there are many tuners out in the market and many ways of having a tuner. Some of the cheapest ones are these little clip-on tuners. Snark makes them. They clip right onto the headstock of the guitar. You just turn it on, hit a note, and it will tell you generally if you're close or not. It's good for easy access, something you can get to the guitar case. For something a little more in-depth, I highly recommend any type of chromatic tuner. Boss makes several, uh, DOD makes some, the, the market is flooded with these. I've had this one here for probably 15 years and it's never failed me. This is good for when you want to do a little more in fine tuning. This is a little tool here I picked up at a guitar shop well, about a decade ago, but you can get them, you can get them online store. It has a string wire at the end to help you quickly wind up the string when you're wanting to wind it, plus a pair of wire cutters so you can cut your nibs off. I know we're all watching A Christmas Story right now in the Christmas season, but uh, we are dealing with fine wire that could uh, BS and put your eye out, so you just want to be safe with that. I'm also going to need a small flat head screwdriver and a small Phillips head screwdriver, a truss rod wrench, I'll discuss that more later, capo, and a very fine string gauge guide. This one I got from Stuart McDonald. I've had it in my workshop for years. It's never failed me. It has both inches and metric, and it gives you ability to really fine in some fine numbers, thousands of an inch and such. Oh, one more thing. I highly recommend one of these, a neck rest. Now, you can set up some towels or a blanket. Now, some people use those, but this allows you to rest your guitar sitting down without the neck and the headstock touching the table or your workbench. Because if there's an accident and something falls, guitars like this especially are really, really prone to a neck breakage or a headstock breakage, which can be a very, very expensive and um, a hassle of a thing to deal with. And finally, uh, you'll see this old green mat underneath here. This is another thing for my workbench. I just like having a work mat out just to keep things clean and soft also so it's not going to scratch up against my When you want to change your strings, some people go ahead and take all of them off at once, put the new ones back on. What I've learned over the years, what I really like to do is to remove just one at a time. I'm just going to unwind it here. Take it out. I use that string winder with the clipper I mentioned. We just use some wire cutters. Clip off the bent end. Carefully slide the string out from the tailpiece, making sure it doesn't scratch up against the guitar bench. Now, to put a new one on, be careful when unspooling these because they will kind of fly out and make a mess inside. Don't want you to put your eye out. We're going to thread it back up through the tailpiece, over the bridge, pull it taut. You can see here, I've already done this, but when I change strings, I take a little bit of pencil graphite, just pencil lead, and put it in each nut slot. 
for the strings. That acts as a lubricant so that the string doesn't kink up and go out of tune on the nut. I run the string all the way through the tuning post, making sure everything lines up okay. And I'm going to pull back from the post here to about almost the first fret. And this is the little trick that will help you lock it into place if you don't have locking tuners but just standard tuners. So now I've got my hands like this. I do a quick wrap so it's now flowing clockwise. And I take this end nub and I pull it up. And what this does is it acts like an anchor. It helps hold that string in place as you turn it and gear it. You've done one loop above the string end that's sticking up. All your others are going to be below it. And as you straighten up, notice I'm holding the string in my hands. I'm not letting it just run right through the nut because that way it will have like sandpaper and just start to dig it out. That can cause some commotion problems in there down the road. Okay, got it in the nut. Got it on our bridge, position it should be in. Guitar up to our tuner. I need to pull back a little bit. And with all guitar strings, they need time to uh, flex and to settle in. It's like settling in a new pair of jeans, a new pair of shoes. They're going to feel a little awkward when you first put them on. So, what I like to do is like to hold, just gently put your hand here on the fretboard, grab the string, and now that's a uh, got some um, tension to it and just pull up on it some. Not too much, don't yank it or it might break. I tend to grab it just beneath the fretboard, just hold it down, you can stretch it yourself. A couple of good pulls, get a note, see it, it automatically tuned it down. And we're going to tune up to E standard. Because the guitar is tuned from your low bass string to your highest string, E, A, D, G, B, high E. Some people create acronyms out of that, little riddles or songs that they can remember, but just E, A, D, G, B, E. Now we got it almost to tune. I take my little wire cutters and cut this nub end off. But you also need to learn how to tune by ear. It's not some superpower that you gain. I'm going to turn the end on here for a moment, just so that you can hear. So here's just, there's just my E note. And the guitar is tuned to fifths, meaning that if you start with the low E, your next string will be in tune with the fifth fret of your E string. So you get up from E to A. string on right now. Those two notes, when you fret the fifth fret on the E string plus the open A note, should be in tune. But you notice you'll hear there's a little distance, a little wave in the back on the, the, the intonation is slightly off. This is best done in the playing position, but you'll watch this when you hear. start to get them generally in the area that you want them to be on for you, especially for standard tuning, and then you can fine tune it by ear. And that gets you started on having everything 
set for when you're facing towards. Another trick I like to recommend is if you've noticed that your string has kind of gone off, say if it's just a little bit flat, don't tune up the B, don't tune down. What you want to do is tune down a little more and then tune back up. You always want to try to tune up. And I found, and it may just be from the guitars that I've played, that if you have a guitar and you hit a string, the string keeps getting sharp, just tuning it down doesn't always work. It's usually because the string has become caught somewhere here in its nut slot along the nut. So what you need to do is just tune it down, say, to the next note down, then tune it up. It always seems to seem more stable. We've gone ahead, we've restrung our guitar properly. We properly restrung it at the headstock here, and we got it up to tune. You may be thinking to yourself, why does it still sound off? Why is it still making, say, a buzzing noise like this? It just sounds off. The nugs are fretting out, the strings are bouncing up against other strings. What this is, is that this because the string action way of describing the height between the frets of the guitar and the strings themselves. The action is too high. Most of the time this is because the neck of the guitar is actually too flat. You may notice up here there's a little plastic cover piece. This covers what's called a truss rod. The truss rod has been in most guitars since about the 1930s. And what it works as is it compensates for the pull of the strings. The strings want to pull the guitar forward being wood, even if it is a very dense wood, eventually they're going to pull forward, the neck is going to start to bow badly, and their action is going to get too high, especially on the higher registers. The truss rod is meant to compensate for that by tightening it up to help to flatten out the neck. The problem is that sometimes the neck becomes, can become too flat, if your action is too low. Just say we play the G chord here, you hear it's buzzing out. remove a truss rod cover and to properly adjust the truss rod in very incremental parts so that the guitar notes, the strings themselves, will cease fretting out and you'll have enough what's called relief around the middle of the neck. Okay, now we've got our intonation set. We've got the guitar in tune. We're going to work on fine-tuning the guitar for us, or what they call setting up the guitar. So we have to place optimally, especially if you're a beginner. It will sound better, and it also will teach you how to take care of the guitar. Well, just in the next few videos, we're going to be discussing that. Thank you. So we have our guitar now set up on our workbench with a nice mat underneath it, and with the neck rest I mentioned earlier keep the neck headstock from being banged up or anything or print it any damage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the truss rod of the guitar, which I mentioned earlier, controls how much forward bow or back bow the guitar has, control there to uh, compensate for the tension caused by the strings. Now since the notes are fretting out on this, we want to loosen this control of the truss rod. So we're going to be doing quarter turns at a time to the left. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. By loosening up the truss rod, the strings will have more ability to pull up and will create more of a bow that will allow us to have better relief and action, especially in these higher registers. Now to begin with, I've already taken the screws off here, but this is the truss rod cover. We're going to go ahead and take that off. Now not all guitars have a truss rod cover. Some have it open up here at the headstock. Some have a small thing you have to take off. Others actually have it at the base of the neck, which is a whole other issue to discuss. And depending on your manufacturer, they may use just a screwdriver to adjust it. They could use an Allen wrench. I've seen just a flathead, flathead screwdriver, Phillips. This one in particular uses a socket wrench type device. And most guitars when you buy them new will include a little tool like this with the socket wrench part on one end and the Phillips head screwdriver on the other end. Now I see some people when they want to uh, adjust their neck relief, they leave all the strings open like this. I don't like doing that because it implies that every string you're hitting is an open string. You want to replicate 
you're playing as much as possible. So you're hitting fretted notes here on the guitar. So what I like to do is I take a capo and put it just at the first fret. And mind you, we've got the guitar up to tune at this point. And now, very carefully, place your truss rod wrench over the truss rod nut. And it can be a little difficult to get it in there at times because the D string wants to get in the way. And as I said earlier, we're going to, only going to do quarter turns at a time. You don't want to really start ratcheting this thing up. It can shock the neck, cause damage. You want to do these things gradually to help fine tune it. So, I've got it into place. I'm only going to do about a quarter turn. And now, you can buy feeler gauges from the automotive store. You can use uh, the fine gauge ruler I've mentioned to uh, test your relief here. But I, what I found works the best are just old business cards. I got an old blank business card here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the eighth fret, which is normally where the string action tends to be around the highest. And we're just going to try to fit that underneath there. As you can see, I can get I can get some of it in, but it starts to catch. It's hard to see on the counter, but it's starting to catch. You can test your high E as well. You can really feel it. It really has a hard time clearing the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. So that means we need to do another quarter turn. All right, I'm getting much better clearance there. Still a little bit of an issue in higher strings. So I'm gonna do one more quarter turn. Oh, and between each of these turns, you do want to retune. This guitar is in really good tuning right now, so we're pretty much set on that. So I've got good clearance on our high E, and I've got good clearance on our, our high e, or low E, and I've got good clearance on our high E as well. Not hearing any buzzing sound. We've got our truss rod finished up. We're going to put our cover back on. And always keep track of where you place screws because these things can fall away and you will have a terrible time trying to find them. Okay, now we're going to cut away for a moment and next what we're going to discuss is, is adjusting the intonation compensation for the guitar. That allows you to fine tune tuning as you go up the fretboard because each guitar has a set scale length. In this case for a Gibson it's uh, 25 and 3 quarter inches, but you still need to fine tune it depending on the size of your strings, whether they're wound string or they're pure string. So. Alright, now that we've reached on your guitar, we've got it in tune, we've adjusted the neck relief, we need to look at what's called compensation, a bridge compensation. And that involves getting your guitar as close to perfectly in tune as possible. All guitars are built with a certain scale length in mind. Uh, fenders are normally 25 and a half inches, and Gibsons are usually 24 and 3 quarters. And the scale length refers to the length of the string from your bridge all the way to the string nut at the top. Not all guitars are made identical. You can think of them as their own unique personality. And as humidity changes come, weather changes, wear and tear, things can kind of start to move out of sync and, and some issues can arise. And also if you uh, start changing around your string gauge, you may prefer, uh, say, a lighter string gauge at 42 to 9, and then decide, you know what, I want to try to put my string gauge on Vaughn and use a 52 to 12. Well, that's going to throw some things off. We discussed how to adjust those with the neck relief and uh, some tuning tricks. But you also need to look at your intonation at the bridge. Now, with this guitar in particular, it's a, it is a hard tell guitar. There's no tremolo system, there's no, no Fender Whammy Bar, there's no Dixie or Floyd Rose. It's a set, solid bridge. But each individual guitar string saddle is adjustable. They are adjustable 
do is call compensation. When you fret a note, even if you got everything perfectly in tune, it may be in tune, say, on the higher register, the lower registers here. But once you move it to higher registers, it may find it suddenly flattening out its flat or even sharp. To prevent that and to fix that, what we're going to do is we're either going to lengthen or shorten each string length by adjusting these little bridges, bridge uh, saddles here. And now what we're going to need for this is, of course, the chromatic tuner we've been using. I highly recommend these. And each guitar bridge is built differently for a hardtail bridge. Some use a Phillips head screwdriver. This one in particular here has a, uh, a flathead screwdriver. I've seen some with an Allen wrench required. Uh, consult the guitar manufacturer and ask them what tools they recommend. For this one in particular, I find it's easiest to work with a, uh, a smaller size Phillips head screwdriver, preferably one that kind of has a movable tip to make it easier to hold and adjust. Now, to test what we're going to do, we're going to turn on our tuner. Easiest to test this first in a playing position. It's kind of awkward to play this sitting down, but we're just going to hit an E note. You can see them a little bit sharp, so I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. Okay, and when we see that light, that means we're 99% there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up one octave from the low A and the low E all the way up to the 12th fret at the next octave. We're going to fret that note. And see, this one's good. The compensation is good. We're hitting an open string and getting generally a solid E note. When you hit an octave up, your E is also solid. Let's try it with an A string. Solid, good in tune. Also good. Turn the E set. Okay, let's try an E an octave up. So that was coming out a little bit flat. So what we're going to do is, and there's an easy trick to remember whether it's you need to push the saddle up forward or push the saddle back. And that is just follow the needle. You can see or follow the arrows. You can see when I hit a string that comes out as flat, it's heading that way. I need to move the bridge that way. So, you can see here these saddles, each of them has a small Phillips head screwdriver slot in the very front. So I'm going to turn it clockwise. I'm just going to move that saddle up just a little bit. You only want to do this incrementally. And you do have to retune the string each time. So it, it does take time to do this, but the benefits are more than worth it. Okay, we have a good D and an open note. Our 12th fret. Maybe we went a little too far, now it's sharp. So, I'm going to move it counterclockwise. Very small amount can have a big difference. There, now we have a perfect open D note. We have a perfect open D, and the D has been fretted, so the compensation has been set. You want to repeat this and check all six of your strings and bring them as close to possible where your open string and your 12th fret, your octave string, are ringing out at the same pitch. And make sure. Uh, also, when you're using any type of tuner, or chromatic tuner, or snap-on tuner, that it is set for the A440 pitch, because that's what most standard music is recorded at. I need to move the bridge that way. So, you can see here these saddles, each of them has a small Phillips head screwdriver slot in the very front. So I'm going to turn it clockwise. I'm just going to move that saddle up just a little bit. You only want to do this incrementally. And you do have to retune the string each time. So it, it does take time to do this, but the benefits are more than worth it. Okay, we have a good D and an open note. Our 12th fret. Maybe went a little too far. Now it's sharp. So, I'm going to move it counterclockwise. Very small amount can have a big difference. There, now we have a perfect open D note. We have a 
perfect book can be, and then David's been credited. So the compensation has been set. You want to repeat this and check all six of your strings and bring them as close to possible where your open string and your 12th fret, your octave string, are ringing out at the same pitch. And make sure uh, also when you're using any type of tuner or chromatic tuner or snap-on tuner that it is set for the A440 pitch because that's what most standard music is recorded at. To optimize the sound of your electric guitar is to adjust the actual height of your pickups. Now I'm not going to go into the physics and mechanics of how the pickup works, but just imagine them as a microphone. Now if you've got a microphone far away, you will have a harder time hearing it. It will sound distant, it will lack some clarity in the top end. Focus in very far and push a microphone into someone's face, it's going to sound somewhat distorted, very punchy, uh, almost overbearing. So what we want to look at doing is, is finding the optimum point where to raise or lower your pickups. We also need to keep in mind that pickups have magnets in them and our guitar strings are, are made out of a uh, metal material that is attracted to magnets. So one thing you have to be careful of is if you push your pickup too close to your strings, while they may not even be hitting, the magnet is having some effect on them. So you, when you hit an open note, it may choke that note out because the magnet wants to pull a hold of it. So we need to find the optimum point to put these two. And one thing you're going to need, you can use a ruler, of course, but what I really highly recommend are fine gauge string gauges. Stuart McDonald makes them. I've seen them on Amazon. Guitar stores sell them. I've seen them made on Etsy, eBay. I highly recommend these because they have your measurements in both uh, inches, metric, and even fine tuning here because we're looking at 60 fourths of an inch of what we're going to be doing today. So what I want to look at first is I'm going to take each string, mainly on your, you'll be measuring on your bass strings and your treble strings. And I'm going to fret the guitar at the last fret and measure the distance between the top of the pickup and the pickup pull piece and the bottom of the string. So, taking this, it's kind of hard to see here, but that's about 764, which is a little too far. Mainly, mainly when I set a guitar up, I like it to be in the 5 to 4, 64 range for a uh, treble pickup. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take one of your screwdrivers, I'm going to loosen that spring up actually, you're going to turn clockwise. That's going to raise the pickup on that end up. So, now we remeasure, and I'm not quite at five yet, so I'm going to keep on going. Right at about 564, which is probably a safe area for a, a pickup of medium output such as this. Because these wound strings, your E, A, and D strings, will put more mass and more output. Now, we're going to do the same thing with our treble pickup. Get a little closely in measure here. Now at about 864. So, I need to pull this one up some. Remember, turn clockwise. Okay, now we're right at 464. So that's going to give me a good starting point. Now from here, you just want to play your guitar and just use your ear. Use your own instincts and ear. Does it sound too loud? Does it sound too kind of far away and faded? You can get a lot of tonal changes just by adjusting your pickup up and down, and it doesn't require a lot of expensive effects pedals. You'll want to do the same thing to your neck pickup as well. And what I'm looking for here is from 564s and 464s, we're going to look at 464s and 364s. There we go, 364s. Like I said, there's no set rule on these. These are just my personal preferences. Uh, I find anything higher up will start the, the magnets will start to affect the strings and it becomes sort of uh, choked out. But learn how to do this and just learn to listen with your ears. And it gives you an excuse to play your guitar more as you try these out. All of these steps I've shown you here today to get your guitar playing better are just things that uh, give you an excuse to play your guitar more, to learn more about it, to learn how these things work. You can do a lot of amazing things just with a simple guitar 
straightforward into an amplifier. You don't need a lot of fancy setup with effects and you know, boost pedals and whatnot. The more you learn about guitar and the more you learn how to take care of and maintain your guitar, the better guitarist I believe you will be. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you all are doing well. Please stay safe and happy playing.